Hey, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Coffee Crisp News. I am that Houston guy, your host, Sergio. And um, I think uh, you're going to find it kind of interesting what we have to talk about today. But before I uh, go into the topic and inform you of a little synopsis, I hope you all got some coffee. I know I do. I got my Starbucks. Hey, last uh, the last episode that I made, uh, I didn't notice this until I saw the video myself, but I had some crusty lips. So if you guys could do me a favor, maybe just uh, leave a comment. Let me know. Hey, bro, you got some crusty lips. They look like an ashy knee. Uh, that would help me out a lot. I drink a lot of water, too. But, mm, you know, early morning, uh, rusty knee lips, that happens. Let's take a sip. All right. So today we're going to talk about how the city prioritizes women and the backlog of rape kits that the Houston has, the city of Houston has. We're going to be talking about the funding they just recently received, how far back the backlog has actually gone. And we're going to talk about forensics and how it all began. So without further ado, let's stop wasting time because I know your time is precious. Let's get into it. All right. So I wanted to start off with this one article. And uh, it's from Mike. Let me see if I can pull up the information on here. This is an article from back in 2015, in February of 2015, and uh, the article, the title of the article is Houston Finds 850 DNA Matches in a Backlog of 30 Years of Untested Rape Kits. All right, so that already sounds really bad, okay? Um, so if we look, we Houston had a backlog from way back in the 1980s. So let's see here what it says. On Monday, Houston officials announced that they had finally completed analyzing backlog DNA evidence in 850 of 6,600 sexual assault cases. The district attorney's office filed 29 charges based on the findings, resulting in six convictions so far and suggested it has years worth of leads on other cases. But some of the cases being investigated happened 30 years ago. So remember, this is this article was written back in 2015, so they're going way back. Um, as the city, as Houston Chronicle reports, city police sat on three decades of unexamined rape test kits. In six of those 29 cases, suspects had been tied to other rapes committed, while evidence that might have landed them in police custody sat unnoticed. In the remaining hundreds of cases, the DNA either confirmed that the correct suspect had already been convicted or could not identify a potential suspect. In a few, investigators found links to other predators who identity, whose identity remains unknown. So by the numbers, despite stretching back to the 1980s, none of the 6,600 rape kits had been looked at before 2013, when the Houston Chronicle reports that the city finally approved $4.4 funding for two independent labs to process them so um, 4.4 million dollars in funding for independent labs to process them so apparently they didn't have enough uh, I guess forensic te technicians to do the work for them so they had to basically give money to an independent lab company for them to do the work which cost a whole lot more if they had just found a way to get some technicians to work for them at a lower rate, maybe get some technicians. Uh, well, anyways, I don't want to get into the... Um, so as you can see, this goes way back to 1980s. Um, what happened in Houston... 
happens all over America, it is significantly it is significant that the city of Houston is among the first cities in the country to completely eliminate its backlog of untested sexual assault kits. Mayor Anise Parker told reporters, according to the Houston Chronicle. Because remember, this was not a Houston problem. This was not a Texas problem. This was a nationwide issue that built up over years and years. All right. And so they go into a, a bunch of information. Um, so how does this even happen? Many police departments simply didn't consider testing uh, the kits a priority, either because they had identified a suspect known to the victim or the victim chose not to press charges. In some cases, the BBC notes cities failed to al allocate sufficient funding for the expensive endeavor of testing the kits and prosecuting the suspects. Then there were the times when police just didn't take victims seriously. Let me read that again. Then there were the times when police just didn't take victims seriously. I have a, a daughter, and, uh, you know, this is unacceptable. Um, Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network Vice President of Public Policy Rebecca O'Connor, who has worked to pressure states into dealing with rape kit backlog backlogs with the Rape Kit Action Project, tells Mike, that there are generally two groups of untested rape kits. Those that are not analyzed due to a policy decision and those that are just misplaced or otherwise unintentionally forgotten. In some cases, authorities are limited by a lack of resources and time. Genuinely, in some places, we just didn't realize we had a problem, O'Connor says. But the bottom line is, we don't know. Ah. <sighs> So let's fast forward to uh, to 2013 because it seems that in uh, 2013 they had finally caught up with uh, well they received 4.4 million dollars in funding to test these kits. And so in 2013, um, victims of, uh, of, of, of rape um, sued the city in 2013. And the judge dismissed the victim's lawsuit over Houston rape kit backlog. <clears throat> A federal judge has dismissed a 2017 lawsuit two rape victims filed against Houston's current mayor and police chief and five sets of predecessors for allowing a backlog of rape kits to accumulate over decades without being tested, arguing that failure ensured the plaintiff's attackers were on the street when they otherwise could have been behind bars. Both women were raped by serial offenders whose DNA long had been in police databases but who went unidentified until Houston paid two private laboratories to erase its backlog of more than 6,000 untested kits in 2013 and 2014. The plaintiffs sought damages, saying the city officials violated their rights to due process and equal protection, and that officials illegally took their property and violated their personal privacy and dignity under the Fourth Amendment. U.S. District Judge Vanessa Gilmore dismissed the case saying the lawsuit had not been filed quickly enough and that the plaintiff's claims did not cover rights guaranteed by the Constitution. Mayor Sylvester Turner said he was pleased at the ruling. And let's, this article goes, to, goes back to 2018. Well, it was updated in 2018. Um, you see right here. Okay, but uh, they're talking about a 2017, 2017 lawsuit, two rape victims filed. Uh, 
And it said here, both women were raped by serial offenders whose DNA long had been in police databases, but who went unidentified until Houston paid two private laboratories to erase its backlog of more than 6,000 untested kits in 2013 and 24. That was the time when the city received $4.4 million to run these tests. That's a lot of money. Um, I don't know how much it really cost. I mean, I guess it costs a lot of money to, you know, because of the technology or... Uh, I mean, you would think they'd get a, a better deal um, from these lab companies, um, you know, just because they're victims. Uh, but I, hey, whatever. Um, at least that's how the, the city feels, too. They're like, whatever. So um, let's look at what the mayor said at the time when the when the lawsuit was, dis was dismissed. Mayor Turner said he was pleased at the ruling. We recognize, this is what he said, we recognize the importance of timely and appropriate processing of evidence and the critical role that it plays in solving crimes and prosecuting perpetrators before they can victimize others, Turner said. The great work of the Forensic Center helps us carry out the central mission of protecting the safety of all Houstonians. So, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's really good at this. Houston began tackling its backlog of rape kits back in early 2013 under former Anise Parker, seeing the $4 million in grants they'd received. So, I mean, when you when you hear about this, you know, it's just like, it sounds really, really horrible. And it is, you know? I mean, I mean it is. I, I don't mean to, like, downplay or make it sound like I'm downplaying what happened to these women, uh, the backlog that's going on. But let's also... Uh, Let's look into the history of forensics and uh, using for, uh, DNA as evidence. Let's see here. Let me fix this for you guys. So from, uh, from what I can tell, um, as far as like the history of uh, forensics, uh, this is horrible. Why does it look like this? Oh my god. Mm, I don't like this. This looks horrible. Well, as it turns out, um, forensic the the use of DNA didn't start happening until 1986. And I think that it first started in, in the UK where they had DNA or semen of a perpetrator who had violated a woman, uh, raped a woman. And that's how, you know, it started picking up a little bit after that. But for quite a while... They weren't using that, even though they had the technology, because it wasn't, I guess, people just, judges and government officials didn't trust the, the technology at the time. But as time went on, they began to believe that, you know, the DNA that they had received from cases was actually valid and and so it picked up when, but it was a very, very, very slow process for, um, for the for the government officials and the cities and uh, anywhere around the world that was using this technology for them to actually believe that it was a very useful technology. Um, I sound very redundant, but in any case, after I would. I mean, after some time, when, 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 when things start to, when it's concrete that the evidence that you have, that the technology works, it should pick up and, and, and also uh, things should move on. The process should move faster. Um, at least that's, that's, that's how I view it. Things should be picked up faster if the technology is actually working. Uh, Houston recently received about $3.4 million 
because there's still a, a, a backlog of rape kits. And Houston received $3.4 million. Uh, and parts of it goes to the Houston Forensic Science Center and to uh, uh, some other department in Houston. Um, and so, I mean, it, it's just a continual backlog of, of victims and people that are victimizing. Uh, and, I mean, these people are out there just still continuing and, and doing the same thing over and over. But uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's, I want to, it's easy to fault the city for not doing enough and not doing it quicker. And then at the same time, it's kind of hard to trust the technology. Even nowadays, the technology that we have is very difficult to trust because, I mean, everything's just getting hacked, computers, phones. But, um, you know, with all the movement that's happening, you know, women's movement, um, you know, believe her type movements. And, I mean, just everything that you can think of, all the sorts of hashtags, you know, believe her type stuff. Uh, you would think that they would move a little quicker and a little faster now. But, I mean, that's what I think. Um, what do you think? What, what do you, is this, is, it, it's, it's just so, it feels backwards, even though we've gone, we've come a long way. And so, what are your thoughts concerning all of this? This is just very hard to, you know, I'm a man, so I, I really don't know what an everyday, what, it, what it's like to be a woman every, on an everyday basis. But I'm curious to hear what y'all have to say. Okay, and uh, I wish I had a rainbows and sunshine story for you, but I really don't. Um, and um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you if you came all the way, if you watched the video all the way through, um, as always, keep it crispy. Hasta luego.